Hello ladies and gentlemen, boy am I really excited to talk to you about a game today that I've been hyped about since it was first announced. And it turns out Square Enix somehow knew that and asked me if I'd like to make a video about Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. They were nice enough to sponsor this video, that's really nice of them, so yeah, thank you for that. And you, do me a favour, check the link below after this video to continue your adventure with Infinity Strash. Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die is releasing on pretty much all modern platforms, PS4, 5, Xbox Series X and S, PC and Nintendo Switch. Now despite being a Switch channel, the footage you'll be seeing here is the PS4 version because that's what was available and I wanted to make content out of it, okay? So I know what you're asking, what is this all about? Well I am here to tell you everything you need to know. Infinity Strash is a spin-off of the well-loved and legendary JRPG series Dragon Quest. It's a full-blooded action RPG that's originally based off an anime. And before you ask, no, you don't need to have watched the anime to enjoy this game. Because if there's one thing you guys know about me, I might be nerdy, but I don't watch anime. And I've never watched the adventure of Die, and I don't need to. I mean, I'm sure it's good, but it's not needed to enjoy this game like at all. All, because this game essentially tells you the events of the story in a slightly truncated way but hitting all the important beats. So having played it, I feel like I've watched it. And that's great for both parties. Those who are familiar will get to relive the greatest moments and play out the badass action sequences, while those new to it will get to experience a really fun story with amazing production for the first time. It's win-win. And yes, you'll notice that there is plenty of story in this game. Like seriously, this game has a big story to tell. It's amazingly thorough and really well presented. It's like you're watching an anime just without any filler at all. You have amazing artwork throughout all the cutscenes, often from the anime, and even some in-game engine. It's just great. I feel like I'm in the 90s again, and that's one thing I wish I could have, is to be culturally in the 90s once again, because that was awesome, and I didn't have a mortgage to pay. Without going into spoilers, because you know the story is pretty much the best part of the game, and as I've said, it's it's like way more than you think. Now you think about how much story you think is in this game, and uh, yeah, you're wrong. Double it. There's more than that. Okay, so I couldn't even explain it, even if I wanted to. That would be a job for my other channel, a bit more Jordan. Go check that out. So yeah, just a brief premise, Dai is a little local hero for things we are told rather than doing ourselves, but the king has learned of his deeds and has sent his best hero trainer to make Dai one of the best of the best. He's joined by Pop, another apprentice of sorts, but they quickly find themselves thrown into the deep end when a dark lord threatens to return. You know that sort of thing. There's lots of cutscenes, lots of amazing over-the-top anime action with twists and turns, really really good stuff. If you love 90s anime, oh my god, you're gonna be in heaven with this. And even though the story is extensive, as you would hope for an RPG, this does have plenty of gameplay to go along with it, don't worry. Delving through the chapters, you start off with just Dai himself, but you're soon followed by Pop, as I've mentioned, and two other companions, the Gun Mage Mom and the Tanky McTank Tank, Hyunko. And together they go on this grand adventure beating the living daylights out of your classic Dragon Quest enemies, slimes, chimeras, you know what I'm on about. And they're all taken out in action RPG combat, which is very intuitive. The combat itself is not overwhelming, because if you've played a modern action game, you'll fit right at home with this one. It's really quite simple. You can switch between each of the four characters on the fly, and they all have their normal attack, you know, hacking and slashing, but three buttons are dedicated to special attacks, each of which is mostly unique to each character. Pop, for example, will have a lot of offensive magic, while Dai has his blade techniques. Mom, she'll probably be the healer. So, very intuitive. But it's not exactly an easy game though. Despite the gameplay being simple, it's not afraid to laugh in the face of your attacks. Very few of your attacks will stagger the enemy, so they're always free to get in shots as well. And I was a bit surprised by this, because Infinity Strash heavily relies on you blocking and dodging. And not only that, but doing it at the precise moment. 
is genuinely a challenge to get the timing down and during those 1v1 boss fights when you don't have allies to distract them can be really brutal. Now there are two difficulty modes, there's the standard one which is what I played on but for those who do find it too tough and I think some out there will, you can notch it down to storyteller mode which is drastically easy, I tried it just for one boss fight and yes it is quite easy. However, if you're sticking with the standard, you still may need to do some side quests to level up a bit and also delve into the Temple of Recollection. This is a side thing from the story and it's where you delve into arena battles of sorts with some roguelike elements. You progress rune by rune by defeating the increasingly more challenging foes, sometimes normal monsters, sometimes mini bosses, sometimes full blown bosses you've taken on in the main story. You start from level 1 all of the time and any experience you gain in here is lost when you're finished which sounds pointless. But there is one main thing it's used for, unlocking bond memories which is a huge part of the game. As they say they are little snippets of memories from your adventures but they can be equipped sort of like armour. They each have their own stat buffs and unique things like maybe unlocking an extra attack, some are even specific to a character. Eventually your party members can take up to 6 of these into the story mode which can really boost your party up. And even then, you can boost these up themselves, like you can level them up by delving more and more into the Temple of Recollection to grab memory motes. It's surprisingly addictive and I would say essential if you plan on playing the normal mode, you're gonna need to jump in and out of there quite a lot. So yeah, overall the gameplay might seem simple but it is a bit of a challenge and you're gonna need to get good at it but it does have plenty of options to keep boosting your character so you can, even if you're struggling, you, you can just power through. Or you know, just go in storyteller mode, up to you. In terms of presentation, I really can't fault it, I've talked about it before but I just can't stop talking about it because it's way more than I expected, like the visuals, at least on the PS4 version that I played, really sweet and crisp. There's voice acting too, in both English and Japanese. I played mostly in English because you know they went to that effort so I thought I'd honour that and it is pretty good. Alongside the story it fits perfectly within the era that the source material was made in. It's like we've just opened a time capsule and I'm sure some purists would prefer the Japanese original so it's great the option is there to you know make both sides happy. No one can complain, right? The Master of One, enough! You want to join your teacher, little one? But the story, uh, you guys just don't understand how massively bored I am of modern RPGs and games in general having visual novel style cutscenes. You know, character art popping in and out of frame in front of a slightly blurred background. It works in VNs because that's their whole shtick, but RPGs, it just seems cheap, lacking in immersion and, you know, a sense of scale of events. But here, using the anime stills, and I mean, a lot of them, it's brilliant. Sure, it is lucky that they have this wealth of material just waiting to be used, but it adds so much and I feel truly way, way more invested in what's going on. And I think it's the best part of the game, great presentation that elevates the story and the characters, like you feel the emotion of the characters, you get to know them way better this way. And overall, I think Infinity Strash, it's a really commendable experience, it's got a fantastic nostalgic story that any fan of anime will adore, it really hits the beats and the pacing is full on, it's presented fantastically too in visuals and audio and anyone can pick up this whether they know about the source material or not. The gameplay is simple enough for anyone to pick up and it's accessible to those who want to enjoy the story or who want a real challenge, seriously those precise parries and dodges, they, they take a lot of practice. But thankfully the game is good enough to allow some easy grind to overcome the odds. The memory bonds, it adds a lot to the game and collecting them via the Temple of Recollection, it adds a new gameplay style. I really think this is the game that everyone should try if you have the means. Speaking of which, please click the link below, find out more information and support your favourite channel at the same time. 
Are you going to be picking up Infinity Strash? Please let me know in the comments and leave a thumbs up so I know. If you watched all the way through, give me a sword emoji alongside a normal comment so that I know who the legends are amongst you because the longer you watch, the more you help us out. Have a good day, everyone.